couple days away here, so whatever you got, go ahead. The McGuire has been thrust into a bigger role uh, last few weeks. What have you seen from him? Good player, explosive player. Does a really good job in the passing game. Um, he gets out quickly on on a lot of routes, and he's he's been a very productive guy. He's definitely looks like a guy that they look for. Darnold looks for when uh, you know the primary part of the route isn't there, and he has a lot of confidence in coming to him as a second secondary type receiver. Quick, um, makes yards with the ball in his hands. It's good vision in the running game. He's done a good job for him. Bill, were you in touch with Phil when he was coming out of Miami in the draft, Bill Dorsett? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about him then, maybe physically, maybe you know, in the as you got to know him as a person, and how have you seen him grow? Yeah, I mean, he's a great kid. Um, I think everybody saw that at Miami. His the coaches and people that we talked to down there, it's all positive. Productive receiver, fast, quick, good hands. I mean, he went the first round. He's a talented, talented player, and he's been all that. When a player is that talented, uh, and now he's kind of moved into a situational role, um, I'm sure there are sort of it can become complicated with some personalities. What does it say about his that he's been such a good teammate and player and coach? Yeah, he's a great kid. He's done. Does whatever you ask him to do. Does his best at it. Uh, tries to get things right. Um, Whatever you need him to do, he's he's there for you. So we ask him to do a lot of different things in practice, um, things at all the kicking game, things like that. Um, but in terms of his role offensively, you know, whatever we've asked him to do, he's he's always done the best that he could, and given us, uh, you know, the Super Bowl. You know, it's a good example. Um, but he's always ready to go. Came in here, you know, it was a tough situation last year. Training camp over and having to relearn the offense and all that. Uh, on the run, but you know, I worked really hard at it. Did a good job. It's done a good job for us this year. Whenever we've called him. So even though he hasn't had a lot of playing time this year, how would you describe, I guess, the potential of the development of Derek Rivers? Good. I like Derek. I think he's got a good future. You see the practice just behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean he's. Obviously been healthy, um, he's worked hard every day. You know, last year we had a ton of injuries at that position. This year um, we've been totally healthy there. And so the opportunities have been, um, well, we have more people that, and for the same number of opportunities. But last year was a totally different situation. So it, it couldn't be more different from year to year. Uh, but uh, when he's had an opportunity, he's done well with it, both in practice and in games. I think he's got a really good future. Glad we have him. He could be a good player. I think he is a good player. It's just kind of the, you know, it's a little bit of a situational thing right now. You guys have a number of rookies on IR. How beneficial is it for those guys to still be involved in meetings and to learn, you know, what it's like to be an NFL player and going around the Yeah, I think they're all learning. It's everything. They they should learn something every day, and they should develop every day. That's what we're trying to do. With them. The only reason they wouldn't is if they don't apply themselves. There's there's every opportunity to do that, and we work with them, do extra things with them, um, and they respond to it. You know, they want to get better. They want to they want to have a you know professional football career. They have improved. It just doesn't show up because there's no opportunity on the field for it to show up. It shows up in other ways, but it hasn't shown up on the field. Steve Anderson has been on the practice squad all season. Uh, it's kind of a different role for him this year as he's so involved with the Texans. How have you seen him kind of adjust to that, that new role this season? Yeah, he's done well for us. We've used him in a lot of different roles in practice as well. He's been great. He's been one of the guys that's been recognized um, on multiple weeks for the job he's done for us, so either as a big receiver or as a as the go-to get tight end um, for the team that we're playing, uh, also in the kicking game. So he's, yeah, he's done well. In your system, I guess, do you view him as more of a receiver or a tight end? 
Uh, he has, you know, good skill in the passing game. Um, you know, he's learned all the positions. So, you know, we have a lot of different formations, and the tight ends are involved in so many of those. Uh, they're an integral part of it. Uh, so, he's smart. He's obviously has game experience, uh, but he's also uh, a versatile player that's able to do different things. Have you seen the chemistry between Darnold and Robbie Anderson over the last couple of weeks grow? Yeah, well, Darnold's had a good, you know, good stretch here since he's come back um, with really all the guys. Um, Anderson, um, certainly Hernan, um, McGuire. So, you know, he's gotten the ball to he's gotten the ball to everybody. He's thrown the ball well. Had some. They've been in a lot of close games: Tennessee game, Buffalo game, Green Bay game. I mean, those are all tight games with a lot of critical plays in the fourth quarter overtime last week. So. Um, obviously, they've gained a lot of experience, a lot of confidence, and you know he didn't throw the ball just one guy. He's he he does a good job. He scrambled. He's made some some key runs uh, on some design plays and some improvised plays. Um, but I'd say overall, their offenses continue to get better every week. And um, you know, they had a big output last week against Green Bay. How big of an attribute is Lyndon Roberts' physicality? And you like, you know, physical tough football players. He certainly fits that category. Guys in locker room usually live against the hardest hitter on the team. So I guess what's to say about someone who's you know, coming out of college undersized, just the, the punch he can pack? That's his playing style. Yeah, but that's you know, he's he's fast and he's compact and he's explosive. Um, Devlin's a little bit like that. Some of that's the position they play and the style that they play it with. So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. I, I think everybody that is out there with him on a daily basis—that's that's his playing style. He brings it. He brings it every day. Well, I know you've mentioned before that Dante has um, a tremendous intellect for the game and the ability to read when he's on the field and, and also lead. But I'm curious. Has that developed since he was at Alabama, and has it has it grown year by year by year with him, his instinct? Uh, well, I think again it was pretty. You know, when when we saw him at Alabama, we had a long meeting with him down there, um, and and other players on the defense. Uh, and I remember that when they had there was, you know, a lot of guys in that room. Um, but you know, clearly he. Had a great understanding of everything. You know, at Alabama, he played um, defensive end in their nickel situations. He also played inside linebacker and outside linebacker. Um, when uh, what his name was there, the guy before him was middle linebacker. Um, could have went to Oakland. Um, uh, I can see him. Anyway, uh, and then. Uh, then Dante missed his junior year, or well, his next to last year, you know, with the knee injury, and then um, came back and played middle linebacker. So he's played inside, played outside, played defensive end in a nickel package. He's involved in coverage, involved in pass rush, and again, that system involves a lot. There are a lot of line call communication, there's a lot of coverage adjustments, and, you know, he's good at all those. I mean, it's hard to do those in one position. You know, he did them in multiple positions in multiple personnel groups. Um, so when he came here, uh, it was really more of the same. You know, he was uh, obviously our system's different. What we see is different from our opponents and so forth. So there's a different type of adjustments and so forth, um, things that we have to deal with. But again, in, in the big picture, it's in the same box, if you will. And, you know, his communication skills are good. He sees things very quickly. He's decisive. You know, he makes a decision. He he makes it quickly. He makes it decisively. Then everybody can can go with it, and and he makes the right decisions. You know, he's got good length. He's again a tall linebacker. Uh, Rolando McLean was the guy I was thinking of. Um, you know, he's tall. He sees some linebackers. You know, don't have the vision and the height that he has. He has the, you know, I think sees things quickly where the backfield set is, and uh, you know, the overall just vision of what's on the other side of the ball. 
Uh, same thing in the kicking game, you know, we've used them in the past in some key roles in the kicking game on punt protection, punt return, um, so forth. So, you know, I mean, he's he's a very, I'd say, natural and instinctive football player. A lot of it comes, I'd say, easy to him, but he studies and he's smart and knows the game plan and, um, you know, is, is in tune with what they're doing. Works well with the line and the secondary as well as the linebackers, which that's important too. Some guys work well within their group, but he works well with you know, Devin, Pat, uh, Duran, as well as the defensive line, you know, Malcolm and you know Lawrence in the end and so forth, giving them calls and you know making sure that uh, our communication, our, our assignments are correct on the different offensive formation adjustments we have to make. He's, he's good at all that. Bill, how have the uh, upgrades to the indoor facility worked out? Uh, good. Yeah, we practiced in there last Friday. Um, turf's good. It's wider, so a little more space there to do some individual drills on the side. So it looks good. Does that at all contribute to your decision, like make it more likely to say we might go in, we might stay out, or is that sort of a non-factor? Uh, yeah, probably, probably helps it a little bit, yeah. And then this time of year, you get some players that have been around for a long time say, I'm not coming back next year. I don't know how up to date you are, but yesterday, Ben Watson, a player you had a long history with, with here when he came in. This morning, Kyle Williams, who you faced twice a year. I was just curious if you had any thoughts on two guys' long careers basically saying this is it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, both great players, uh, guys I have a lot of respect for. Um, you know, knew Ben from when he was here, but have stayed in contact with Ben through the course of his career. And Kyle got to know at the Pro Bowl. Um, that was a long time ago, and you know, see him on a regular basis. Um, both guys are, you know, good people. Um, have been great players, had great careers. Have a lot of respect for both of them. So, Bill, I, I know you talked about earlier this season about <coughs> how Gronk's speed can. Kind of a week to week thing. We asked you, you know, is his speed the same? But you look at the tight end position and maybe like a guy like Antonio Gates, who's been around forever and hasn't necessarily need, needed elite athleticism to be productive later into his career. Is that something that you could see maybe Rob doing is, is kind of adjusting his game or studying a guy like that? To, well, I think if you talk to any player that's played in the league for an extended period of time, there are adjustments that they make in their game over the course of their career in in other sports as well as football. It's not just football. So, um, And I've talked to a number of players about that in football as well as other sports. I mean, I think it's pretty much a universal theme. You're, you know, As you gain experience, you find ways to do things that are different than what you did when you were at a different point in your career. Um, it's probably true of coaches too, but certainly for players. So I think every player evolves to a degree like that. And sometimes it's a new technique, sometimes it's, you know, their skills, emphasis is different. Um, sometimes you're in a different system. So, but you know, the bottom line is right now, I mean, everybody's really just, just committed to their this game for the for the Jets, doing the best they can to get ready for this one and go out and beat the Jets. That's really what it's about. Well, can I ask you kind of a historical question? Um, I was watching something on uh, ESPN SEC Network about uh, Derek Thomas and how rare it is uh, for a linebacker uh, to kind of, you know, go out there and, and do his own thing or be given the independence to do that. And uh, I'm curious, in, in today's NFL, from what you see, how rare that is, how many players are able to actually go out there and kind of instinctively uh, run around and get after the quarterback, for instance. Yeah, I didn't see a piece on it. I'm not really familiar with exactly what it is. I've never coached Eric, so I'm not really that familiar with, say, his style of play or what you're referencing there. Did you ever coach against 
Oh, coach against, against them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely coach against. Fast. <laughs> Fast. If he beat you off the edge, it was all over. And he beat a lot of guys off the edge. He did a good job of anticipating the snap count. He had a great first step. Could bend. Could get underneath. Sometimes the tackles punch. Um, but you know, he was he was a great edge rusher. Very probably as good a one step quickness as. You know, like Von Miller or you know guys like that 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 could really, you know, win on one step, and then it was then then it was all over. Um, they didn't win on the first step. Then you know you had to deal with their counter moves and all that. But a lot of times they would just, you know. And again, that was back in the day where uh, the rules are a little bit different than what they were. Defensive linemen flinched and things like that. And uh, they've changed that rule since then. But you know, in Kansas City, they were they were pretty good at that. The crowd noise was intense and. And uh, a lot of times those those tackles or tight ends, whoever it was, laid out of their stands or just a split second late and he was by him. So Yeah. I remember when he came to Cleveland, you know, couldn't run on that field. So this is like you know, a different player. <clears throat> Any questions? All right. Okay, thank you.